everybody, this is Graham Brown. We are in the studio. I'm joined by special guest and welcome. Thank you, Graham. Great to be here. It's excellent. We're going to talk about getting your podcast started and look at the options. Today, a quick 101 on equipment, because this is the main question people ask. What do I need to get started? So we're going to whiz through what you need to get started from the very basic to the more sort of professional setup. So people like to know, you know, what do I need to start with? Microphones, laptops, and so on. All the way up to if you really want to splash out a studio like this, for example. Fantastic. But you know, let's do one step at a time. So um, what I'll do, Anne, is I'll, I'll just give two options for setups and then we'll have a chat and find out where you are with your podcast as well and your plans. Um, before we get started, maybe you can share what your goal is. What is it that you want to do? I, from a very early age, I've always been fascinated by the spoken word, broadcasting and stories. Right. And what I would really love to do is I'm at a stage now where I, I'm exploring a lot of different avenues and I'm hearing a lot of people's stories. And it would be wonderful to actually record some of them mm. and, and see how things go. But of course, it's very overwhelming when you don't come from a broadcasting background to to really understand what do you need to get started? Right. How do you go from wanting to do it to actually practically getting started? So I think what you're doing is is marvelous. And and I think, it you know, the advice that you can give is going to be vital for people to take that step from wanting to do it to actually producing something. Right. Yeah getting over that sort of psychological hump of like, what's the first step that I can take? Because I mean, I suppose it could be a little bit intimidating to come to a place like this and think, well, I can't build this day one. What are the steps that I can take? So have, let's have a look at the, the most basic step to get you started. And then we'll have a look what comes next. So I've got some setups here in my very professionally designed presentation, as you can see. Um, this is almost the basic setup. If you wanted to get started, but now you said you, you wanted to record stories, so I guess you want to do a one-on-one -on -one interview of sorts, right? Yes, I think that's where I'd love to start. Okay. Yes, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So the most basic setup here, laptop, microphone, headphones. Okay. That is the, that's step one. Everybody can get to this step. You um, have a laptop. You probably have a set of headphones. You don't need expensive headphones like these. You can just get the earbuds that you use for your mobile phone, a pair of those white headphones. You can stick them in. And then I guess the only thing that you need to spend money on at the beginning is a microphone. Now, this is where you can't really cut corners. So some people think that they can use those, you know, the ones that you use for your mobile phone as a microphone. But the quality is just not good enough. There's one thing, I mean, when you're doing a, a podcast, you cannot compromise on audio quality because it will sound terrible so you've got to get a decent microphone we're sort of, we're starting about a hundred dollars minimum up i think th the advice that you can give with a mic on the microphones because i think that's where it starts to get scary you're yeah. absolutely right i think you know laptop maybe yeah, and headphones but then the microphone is the thing that i think that i you know what do you mean you know what kind of quality i want the quality to be um, I don't want it to be too amateurish. So what do I need to get a reasonable sound quality? All right, well, let's go there. Let's have a look. A reasonable sound quality. Well, if we jump back in, um, this is the goal. If you can start getting to this kind of level where we are, I mean, this is just, for example, if you were to just get the basic equipment, but we don't need this. You don't need this to get started, but we're sort of putting it out there, what you need if you want a really, really good sound quality. Radio level sound quality, decent mics like these ones. We'll talk about microphones and soundproofing and so on and a mixer. So let's start with the basics on the microphones. What do you need to get started? Because most people know these kind of microphones because you're familiar with them from karaoke maybe yeah. or you know, you've seen them on TV with the, the, um, the reporters will hold this kind of microphone. It's called a dynamic microphone, the most common style. Or if you do public speaking, stuff like that and then you have one of these kind of mics right um these are the most basic microphones they're cheap um they work well if you're in like a conference and it's noisy um because they only they they just take the sound from around the the head of the microphone right okay 
Um, the problem is they're not very good for podcasts and they're not, you know, you don't, they're difficult to stand, they're difficult to work in these kind of environments, right? Right. So this is what most people know as a microphone, but I wouldn't recommend it. So the reason why I'm putting that out there is so you know when you see it is that that's not for me. Okay. Understand, yeah. There's another type of microphone called a lapel mic, which, or sometimes a lavelier, which is, it clips on, right? So yes. you would have seen this maybe on TV, from like news and that kind of thing. And again, in conferences, they use them, don't yes. they? Yes, right. And these microphones, they'll clip onto your um, clothes. Now, there's a reason why these, are, these work in certain situations. These are good for travel. So if you wanted to do like your storytelling, capture somebody's story, and you were going somewhere, like you were flying somewhere, these would be good because they're very light. You can pack them into a tiny little box. You don't have like huge cables for them and so on. So you can get like two of these and you can plug that into, I'll, I'll show you in a minute, you can plug that into a smartphone, into your laptop. So th these work really well in field recording. Well, that's fantastic. So you could literally pin that on to somebody, you'd yeah. have one, and then have a conversation and, and the quality would be okay? Yeah, the quality's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the thing is about these microphones is that you can't skimp on price on these ones. Understand. You, you, you can go onto AliExpress and find them for like $5, but their quality is terrible. It's, it's not even worth having. They're, they're up from $200 upwards for these good ones. And then you can, you can spend thousands on these, like the proper studio mics that they use on TV are yeah. of really good quality. Of but you're, you're talking thousands and thousands for those, right? Right. So those are a good one. If you do a lot of traveling and you don't have a fixed uh, setup for your podcast, then these are worth considering. The, the, stu the quality is good enough. You know, you're not going to get an amazing quality. And the problem is, is, you know, rustle of the clothes and all yes, those kind of things. Yeah, and, uh, yes. And then, the, of course, the, yeah, the, the, the outside, um, exactly. outside sounds. The, yeah. This is an important thing as well. The, the, the ambience is, is really important in recording. It's m sometimes more important than the, the, the microphones themselves. We'll talk about that in a minute, like okay. where you do the recording. Yeah. People often don't think about that, mm -hmm. you know, and they can get a very bad sound quality because they've cho chosen the wrong setup. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah. So here's a good option, um, lapel mics. You can do just one for yourself. You can get two, if you do two interviews. Um, if you start to get more, it gets a bit more difficult. Of course. So if you had two of them, um, are they both connected into your laptop at the same time? Yeah, so there is a connector. I'll show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. a, a small, you've got to get a connector to put it into your laptop. They won't plug straight in. Right. Because the, the laptop won't know it's that type of, microphones it needs a little adapter yeah so i'll show you what you need to get if you want to do like a one-on-one -on -one with mm -hmm. a little adapter and then you can just whack it straight into your laptop and you're good to go excellent that's real easy yeah so you know you're not going to have an amazing sound quality but to get started that's a good choice because it's, it's much lighter than carrying a a, a big microphone around yes absolutely yeah that, that makes a lot of sense when when you are mobile and mm. indeed i am so that that that's looking um the that's a good option that's a good option yeah for yeah me, but so don't i mean yeah just be careful of the cheap ones of those you what you should look for is i mean if you can go back to this one on the the screen um this brand is sort of a very average brand boyer but the the standard brands the expensive brands are the ones known for quality like road or sure or sennheiser the, the well-known brands. Yeah. As again, you're, you're paying 200 up for these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on. The next one is, these are the most common uh, podcast microphones. And the one on the left is very common. It's the Blue Yeti. You're, if you meet podcasters, every next podcast will have one of these. I have one. There's one hanging in the studio over there. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the one on the right is an Audio Technica. So the, these are two of the most common. They're about... US $200 up. Sound quality is good. These work really well if you sit them on a table and you, you talk directly into it. Now, these work really well when it's just you talking or you talking via Skype. So you're Skype interviewing somebody right. where there's only one in the room. Yeah. When you start adding two of these in the room, the, the quality is not so good because they pick up a lot of noise. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if that in your setup would be a great 
scenario unless you were doing Skype interviews. If you're doing Skype interviews, these are much better than the lapel mics because it's yes. just one. Yeah, understood. And could you put this one sort of in the middle of the two of you? So in other words, you're having a conversation. Yeah. And do you kind of move it around? Or yeah, I wouldn't move it around because it will be it will take noisy. Up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you can, the one on the left has, they, they have these um, settings which can change the, the pickup of the sound. So normally this microphone, for example, picks up in a little bubble around the top. Now with these ones, you can change it such that it picks up from the back, from the front, or 360, you can change that dynamic. That's on the Blue Yeti. So you could do that. You could put a Blue Yeti in the middle, run it into your computer, and just have two people talking. The quality won't be great. Okay, so the quality, uh, if you don't have the studio, mm. would be better with two lapel mics when you're when doing you're a one-on-one. On one. On one. Absolutely, And then yeah. if, if you're doing a Skype interview where you've got obviously one voice coming out of the computer and yeah. your voice going into, the, say, the Blue Yeti, mm. then that's the way to go. Blue Yeti's the best. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the voice would come out of the earphones rather than the computer because you'll get that bounce otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, so that's the most common one because most people who do podcasts do their podcast via Skype. Yes. So yes. that's why this is really popular and it's Understand. talked yeah. about most. Yeah. But again, you know, doing it on in, in a face-to-face, a -face, it's the, the issue is the sound pickup because they pick up a lot of noise around, you know, like air conditioning, people in the next room, people banging their hands on the table. It picks up all of that. So I know that th there is an amazing amount of ambient noise, isn't there? If you're not in a beautifully soundproofed mm. area, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you don't hear it until you start doing your own podcast. You don't realise how noisy places are. People will suggest doing a podcast in an airport, yes. for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't realise, oh, that's going to be fine. It's okay to have a conversation. But when you start recording, it's very different. So that's the, uh, these are condenser mics. And what these, the, a, a key part we're going to come to in a minute is about the cabling so these run off USB cables. Yep. Everybody's familiar with that. You can whack that straight into your laptop and you're good mm -hmm. to go. The ones before, um, if I can just wind back, these run off a standard microphone jack. Again, yep. it's the same thing. You can plug it straight into your MacBook or your, your PC and you're good to go. Now we're going to move on to these microphones. These are Studio Dynamic. These are a lot higher quality. Um, this is the Shure SM7B, the ones we're using now. And the quality is amazing compared to the other ones. And they, they have a few things which we'll talk about, but with the other mics as well, you can get these kind of effects. It's firstly, that if I was moving it around, there's not much noise on the mic. It doesn't rumble a lot. Oh, it's yeah. just like mm -hmm. big deal, right? Yeah. And they also uh, talk about pop filters. Do you know what a pop filter I is? I don't know what a pop filter a pop is. Filter, I'll come to that. So if you want to look pro, you can put one on your microphone. But a pop filter is like, if I was to go, pop, 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 oh. right? Yeah. If I was to do that on a normal mic, it would clip, it would distort. So you'll find that when you interview people, as you get better at interviewing, you'll change your voice a little bit to work with the microphone. However, the people you interview won't know that. Of course, because it's their first time. Exactly. Actually, it could be their first time ever in, in front of a microphone. So they may be talking like normal. And especially if you interview certain um language-based people. So, for example, if you if, if view somebody who's French, for example, speaking English, they speak with a strong plosive. So they oh. p -p 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 a lot. Yeah. And that can clip all the time. So when you're recording it, it can sound horrible. But these have them installed, so you can really shout at this mic and it'll be all right. It doesn't distort. So how do you get that on the other ones? We'll talk about that in a minute. You mm -hmm. can ha get that effect very cheap on a normal microphone for about $20. Right. So you can install a pop filter. I'll show you how to do that. Well, that that would be that that would make such a huge difference. And it looks pro as well. Yeah, because everybody wants to get the best sound quality mm. that they possibly can. Obviously, for the fewer few amount of dollars. So yeah. you know, it's Absolutely. finding that sweet spot between not breaking the bank to get mm. your equipment, but also moving it into a reasonably professional sound. Yeah, there's a few hacks. And right. we'll talk about those. And the positioning as well is that I mean, with these, and we talk about how you can get, one of the things you'll find is when you do your recordings is getting the right position of the, the microphone is really important because you'll get good at talking to the mic. 
but as we already said like your guest won't so they won't know they'll be talking to you and they might be sort of talking away from the mic yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know that would be quite annoying to a listener if if, if they're not you know, got different levels and, you know, they're coming in and out all the time. Yeah, and it distracts so much from what yeah. people are saying. You know, the interview can be great, but if the sound's moving in and out, then it's never going to be, you know, that's going to be too distracting. Exactly. And yeah. you don't want people to focus on that. They want to focus on the story that you're yeah. trying to tell. All right, so that's the basic on the mics. We've seen the basic microphones. Just a, a quick run through. Your lapel mics, your condenser mics, which are popular especially for Skype. And if you really upgrade, you can go for Studio Dynamics. That's nice. where we are. Cables we've talked about. You'll run off an, a USB mic cable. All mics that we've shown, for example, the condenser mics, they're all USB. XLR, these are the fat cables which run out of these. You, like, for example, if you're a musician you and you've got a, a guitar, you'll oh, run an yeah. XLR you'll run these big fat boys here, which are the ones on the right. They're heavier, much better quality, right? Right. So you won't use these unless you use pro mics, okay? So okay. not to get sort of carried away with this, this is the next step. So just focus on the USB cables. And then there's another thing that you'll see people talking about mixers. And you'll think, oh, do I need one of those? Because you think, oh, they've got a mixer. Maybe I should get a mixer. Do mm -hmm. I need a mixer? Yeah. So. You know, we've got a mixer here. The reason is if you, the more expensive the mics you get, the more you need to have a mixer, right? Because right. they need power and the mixer powers it, right? Okay. Okay. You won't need it if you're just running normal mics. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I'm putting it in there is say not to get distracted and feel you've got mixer envy because somebody else has got a <laughs> podcast yeah. going and they've got mixer. Yeah. Because some, some mics need power and they run from the mixer and also, you know, if you start doing one-on-one -on -one interviews and you would probably need to get a mixer to control the levels and the quality. Understand, yeah. yeah. This is for a static setup. You, you can't take this with you on the road. No. So uh, those are the basics. All right, so moving on. There you go. There's oh, your pop shield, this Anne. Is, this is the... <laughs> one of these babies. One of these. It's very, very easy to... Okay, so if you're if you've got a... Um, the Pell mic, you won't use these. But if you're doing um, Skype interviews, get one of these. You can order them. I think I can get these from AliExpress for 20 bucks. And all they do is they clip onto in front of the mic and they just create a shield right between you and the mic. It doesn't really affect quality. But well, that sounds like a great hack. That just, just that small piece of equipment will make a huge difference. It does. It's amazing. Yeah. And when you, whenever you do them as well, and you sit with people with the, the microphones and you put the pop shields, they're like, oh, this looks really professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know they cost 20 bucks each. So there oh, you go. It's, it's a, quick, yeah. a quick hack. And um, one more as well. We're starting to get a bit more technical. But if you have a fixed installation, like you do have a studio at home, for example, or you just yeah. like a space at home, um, or table at home, which you use for podcasting, I would really recommend getting a, a stand like a boom arm, so you can just put it right in front of you. And you can get them quite cheap, mm -hmm. $20 again for the cheap ones. You can spend all the way up to 500 if you want. But th they'll make a big difference. There's two things that'll make a difference. Firstly, the mic positioning. Yeah. So you can get it right close to you. And then also, you'll find that when people talk, you know, some people wave their hands in gestures and they keep banging the mic. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, Graham, when would you use a boom arm on which microphone? On the uh, on the Blue Yeti or no? Yeah, you, you would use it on any of the heavy mics. So you use right. it on, if we go back to the, the presentation, so um, these ones here. So the condenser mics or these studio dynamic mics, uh -huh. yeah. you'd use a, a boom. Right. Th these ones you don't because they clip on. Understand? Yeah. yeah, that's what I was just wondering. Would you use it on the on the on the um, those mics there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with those, yeah. you take this, the, you take the bottom off, and screw it into the the boom. Oh, and right. It so it. instead of it sitting on the table, it yeah. would actually sit on the boom arm. Of yeah. course. Yeah. And yeah. You, yeah. you don't realize a lot of people like when they're talking to you, they'll touch the table and they put stuff on the table. If you've got like a stand like that, it picks up everything. You know, all that sound resonates through the stand. Yeah. I mean, this little the foot little stand. stand yeah. The foot stand, But yeah. with a boom, it just gets, you know, it just kind of disperses. It doesn't pick up any of that banging. 
That's great. I'm quite interested, Graham, in between the... So you've got the professional mics, yeah. you know, uh, the studio style mics, and the one that most people use, which is back to this one, the, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the, the Blue Yeti style. And, um, you know, so to get the best professional setup with this, mm. you, you, you are uh, better to get the, the boom arm in mm. and, um, and position that microphone, even if it's just you're doing a Skype yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. So you, you've got the boom arm on them really for yourself because Absolutely. you'll be gesturing and banging the table and everything yeah. else. So, you, so that's the, you know, for, um, you know, people who are just starting out, that that would give you the best professional sound. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. used to do that for when I had a when I did my podcast at home, and they're pri well, they'd all be by Skype. Yeah. I had the Blue Yeti, a boom arm, and a pop shield, and I'd set that up. At, there was a table in my house, so I'd set yeah. it up, and I would just do it all from there, and that worked perfect. I, I got great. a really good sound quality, and you know. Only when I started wanting to do like multiple person interviews did I need to change all of that. Yeah. And I need to like completely change the setup. Uh -huh. But if you want to do Skype, that is that produces a really good sound. And if you if you sort of edit it up, we're, we're talking later in the course about of editing. Of course, about editing, yeah, but which is the next big question. Right. Yeah. But you can get a really good sound quality out of that. And I think as well, if it's just you doing a Skype call. You know, if it's like a 45 minute call, your position is going to change and you kind of want to move that around a little bit with you. Yeah. You don't want to get comfortable. And, mm -hmm. you know, I find sometimes when I'm doing the call, I end up almost like lying down when I'm doing it. So I want to yeah. kind of move it with me. But, yeah, I mean, people have different styles. Yeah. So. Just a quick question, Graham, yeah. on the on the Skype quality. Yeah. So obviously that is going through headphones. But how do you get that? to uh, you know the other person's sound quality yeah because that always worries me is uh, you know are you going to get sort of bad sound quality you're you know you're all mic'd up and that's going to mm. be okay but what about the the sound with the other person yeah that's the challenge right. so you've got a couple of options we go a bit deeper in on the course the first one is you um find somebody who's got a good setup yeah which is always a challenge mm -hmm. but there are people who do their own podcasts or already set up who have microphones that makes a huge difference who, who know what to do so for example people who are used to this yeah that makes a big difference the second part is you can record on their side as well so you record on your side and you also get them to record the track on their side it's a little bit harder to set up right. but if they're if they're not very technical Yes. then all of the above don't apply. It doesn't so, apply, Yeah, exactly. But the, the point yeah. is, as long as your sound quality is really good, it won't be, because we'll talk about recording in the course, but as long as your channel is good, yeah. you've got the microphone, uh -huh. it's not recorded through Skype. You record theirs through Skype, but yours will be recorded locally. Yeah. So your recording, your voice will be recorded directly onto the, the, the laptop. And then it will take the audio from theirs through Skype, through the internet, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. yours will sound all right. Yes. If you have two that sound really bad, it's really bad. I understand. Yeah. 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 We'll go a bit deeper into Skype in the course. Yeah. Because obviously that's a really important tool. All right. So let's see where we are. In We've, we've had a, a look at the, the cheap hacks. $20. Um, $20 again. You don't need to go full out on the 500 here. Unless you're feeling lavish. Recording via laptop. Now you can get free software, and that's what we use free software even now, Audacity. You can download this free. Oh, wow. Mac, Windows, what are you? Um, Windows. Windows, so the Windows version, absolutely free. What you can do, you can download this today, plug in. You can even, you can even do it with your um, uh, smartphone headphones. Yeah. And record straight away and just practice. And recording. practice the recording, yeah. yeah. Just get sort of used to that. It's a free software. It will record everything. You can edit it. It, it can uh, uh, then export it as an MP3 file, which you can use for your podcast. Yeah. Um, it has all these kind of filters built in to remove noise. If there's like a clicking noise going on somewhere, it can remove that. It's quite, I mean, for a free software, it's pretty amazing. That does sound amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I think the, the biggest hurdle people have is just do it. Just yeah. actually start with something. And, you know, just getting that um, software loaded will be, you know, that, that sets you up. Absolutely. And you could do your own podcast just like a, if you wanted to, just you talking. Yeah. <laughs> and straight to tape, a monologue. People do that. I've done that. Yeah. You know, you don't need to find guests so you can get started. Or you can just practice your audio book, whatever it might be. Indeed. You can get started and just get going with that software. Yeah. That's great to know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll come to editing in the course. Now, th there's a few other options for recording, if you, especially if you're doing field work. Obviously, the laptop is great, the best tool. Um, you might see these things as well. This is a Zoom. Oh. Uh, it's about $500. There's cheaper versions of this, about 200 smaller ones. But basically what this is, this will do everything you need for recording. It record digitally. It will take four inputs. So you, you could actually... Uh, I've, I see people use these if they go and do in-person interviews and they'll use lapel mics, they'll plug in two, three, four lapel mics into these, and they record straight onto these. They prefer it to a laptop. It's a little bit better. I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, but you mm -hmm. could actually do something really um, high quality with this. Yeah. And it, you know, I can see in a field situation why people would want to use that rather than get their laptop out and mm -hmm. do all these kind of things, right? Yeah. Um, you can actually also use this without any microphones. It has mics on the top of it. So it's almost like a recorder's, you know, sorry, a reporter's mic, you know, when yes. you can actually do, because mm -hmm. it's got two mics set at the top. Yeah. So that's another option. If you don't want to use your laptop for whatever reason, you know, laptop's sometimes too big or power or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And you can actually use a smartphone. How about that? Wow, the most, yeah, the most, well, the most ubiquitous piece of exactly. equipment we've got, yeah. No, no excuses. No. <laughs> you can get yourself, so there are, I'll, I'll show you the software you can use. Um, this costs less than $10. I think you can even get them free versions of it, right? Wow. Um, yeah, you can record via a smartphone. So there's a couple of options. You can do a one-on-one. -on -one. You can just do like your monologue, get a, a very basic um, lapel mic, like this one here, that might cost about $50, let's say. A decent one, Yeah. starting. And just hit play and you're ready to go. Wow. It's that easy. And the quality is not bad. And I've seen people do podcasts this way. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, can I do that with two people? Yeah. That's probably, I mean, that's a neat setup because then you're not sort of having to pull out your laptop you could actually do something quite dynamic. You could use, and I've done this, and it works well. You could use your smartphone, two lapel mics, and a little adapter. And you can. This is what you can use. Um, you need a piece of software called RecForge Two. It's about ten dollars. Right. Wow, it's very neat. Yeah, and then this little adapter here. This is um, this is a Rode SC Six, I think. Um, so so you only need one of those. But you need the the the, uh, the lapel mics to go into them. But that will plug into your laptop. It will take two inputs, so two microphone inputs, and you can have headphones coming out as well. Yeah. Um, and the quality is really good. I'm surprised. The quality is really good. You you can get the free version of the software, but I think it, you can only record up to five minutes. But ten dollars. Ten dollars. I mean, yeah. you know that that's an in that's incredible value for for that amount of output. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know why not? The smartphones are pretty damn good these days. They've yeah. got a lot of power. So the the other thing as well is you can get um, extension cables. Which so what I find, for example, the those lapel mics only have about a meter or two meters. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes. You can get an extender cable. So you can actually sit, like you and I are sitting here, you could probably do it like that. I understand, yes. Yeah, so or somebody sitting right over there. Yeah. Yeah, and just connect everybody and go. That's how it works, yeah. This works really well if you are doing recordings, let's say at a conference or very sort of dynamic environments. Yeah. You know, you might not need this kind of setup. You could use your laptop if you went to an office and you had a nice setup. And and it was quiet yeah. and, uh, and, and controlled. That's but the it, key word. But if you are in the field, then... And, and, you know, people 
like a bit of actuality around them if it's made clear that you know look, we're not in a studio we're actually live at the yeah. event we're doing you know we're going to chat through you know a, a couple of pointers and and then uh, you know people expect there to be a bit of noise in the yeah, background yeah a bit, a bit of bit of energy a bit of energy yeah. indeed yeah how yeah. if, if you're um so, for example, if you're in an environment where it's difficult to get your laptop out or you're just sort of standing, for example, or you want to be a bit more dynamic, you could use a smartphone and get away with that. Yeah, that's, that's great to know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I don't know. So I, I see people, I mean, I've done it as well, do interviews at conferences. It's a great place to grab people, get some sound bites. And you don't want to have to get that person and say, well, can you wait sort of 20 minutes whilst I set up? You just <laughs> yeah. want to kind of get your smartphone out and go. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the wonderful spont spontaneous, you know, spontaneous. And, mm. and, you know, you can just <laughs> capture that moment, which yeah. will pass very quickly if you, you're right, if you have to do the whole setup because they won't have the time and, you know, you, you'll miss them and they'll go off. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Strike whilst the audio <laughs> iron is hot. <laughs> Indeed. So there we go. That was a walkthrough. And just to, for those that didn't actually flash it up on the... Uh, original screen but just f for those who are interested in the software that's audacity there um go and grab yourself go and download a copy of that i think that's the action point from this intro yes. session and play around with it get used to it get used to what your voice sounds like what your microphone sounds like what your audio setup sounds like you know i because once you start recording you start to get an appreciation for ambience Yes. Right. Yeah. And we, we, I want to, and we'll spend a whole lesson going into that, like how to get a really good sound around you, because you, you you don't want to be sitting in a a bathroom, for example, or sounding like you're sitting in a, yeah. a bathroom because of that echo and reverb, and you you'll be struggling with reverb because it's everywhere. You don't realize when you start doing interviews, it actually a lot of the places we sit in normally are very noisy. Yes. And you, you know you talk about energy, but What's quite annoying is when you're sitting in a, in a, a room and you just, it's kind of echoing on the, the interview. So you want to get rid of that. How do you get rid of that? So you don't have to, like we've got here in the studio, spend hundreds of dollars on soundproofing. Mm -hmm. you, you can do some really basic stuff. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in the course. Is that, you know, even for example, um, if you're recording at home, I see people recording in front of their cupboards, like in front of like clothes. Oh, to deaden the sound? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, or in front of curtains. That's, that's a great hack. Yeah. yeah, it is, it is. I mean, because yeah. you, everybody's got like a clothes cupboard, right? So you've got to make yourself a little cosy cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I've seen pictures. I mean, you can see pictures of people doing it, like talking into their, you know, their, their wardrobe. Yeah. It's funny, but <laughs> it, it works. Absolutely, the sound quality is great. Or, yeah. you know, one thing I use is I use a, a cushion. Like, if I'm going to do a recording in a hotel room, which is where they happen, right? And yeah. I'm doing Skype, for example, and the only time I can Skype this person is in the hotel room. I, you know, hotel rooms, there's a lot of hard surfaces, you know, like the walls and, you know, like there'd be hard wood and so on and glass. Yes, of course. There's a lot uh, of that. Yeah, yeah very um, echoey, sterile Bouncy, yeah. in environment, yeah. So you can grab a pillow and you can whack the pillow behind the microphone. Oh. So you're talking you, microphone, pillow, Great. And it works. It's yeah. like, you know, thousands of dollars worth of acoustics, but yeah. in, in a pillow format. Everybody's got a, yeah, access <laughs> to a pillow. There you yeah. go. So there's a few hacks. Hopefully that was useful, Anne. I mean, if you have any sort of questions about that, we can sort of jump back in and have a look. But hopefully that's given you sort of a, a very basic intro and a feel for what your options are getting started. I, it was brilliant. And I think it, it's certainly given me the confidence to go out now and actually do, you know, get started mm. in a small, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'll start relatively small. But you have spelled out the options that I've got and that's be, that, and demystified them mm. because I think it's too easy to get overwhelmed with too much choice mm. and then and then you don't do anything because it it's just gets you know it just gets t you know too difficult whereas now i know what i need to do mm. so the next step is actually i'm going to go out there and do it get started get started sounds great yeah. what what do you think the best option for you would be given the type of podcast you want to do i think the lapel microphones yeah. will work well i think wh where i'm um wanting to start is face to face mm. um so definitely the lapel um microphones i think will be the mm. best for me yeah and with with a laptop prob you know uh, setup so 
at the moment, um, that's where that's where I'm I'm going to head. But mm. I love the other options as well. And um, that's the problem, you know, not not the problem. That's that's great. Um, that is the problem. There's always more <laughs> yes, options. There's always more yeah. options, and they all. I, I really do see the pros and cons of mm. everything. So, you, you know, it it it, it f you know if if I start to get serious about mm. this, mm. then I think you you need to be flexible and have a few options. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the fixed mic yeah. will become much more, um, you know, much more important. Mm. And and the idea of and of course. The idea of um, actually Skyping people mm. in, um, people who, you know, obviously you, you can't get face to face with mm. and that's going to happen a lot. And it, that's not going to work with a lapel mic. So I think I, I will have to be flexible and, and look for the investment in both. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the right way to approach it. Find out first, like, you know, go f be clear about what kind of interviews you want to do. Mm -hmm. So for you, face to face, obviously you're much more comfortable with that. You're much better at it. And then, work, you know, get the most basic equipment for that. Try that out. You know, not spend thousands of dollars because it, then it yeah. becomes a burden, doesn't it? It but does. Be yeah. flexible. You may decide you start that and think, oh, I don't like face to face. I really like Skype. As an example, it may be the case or the other way around. Right. So be flexible enough that you haven't spent a lot of money that you can easily change that, change your setup. So you have that. And, and also, you know, like I, I think if you like you said, if you get serious about it, you can upgrade, right? But not before yes, you get serious. Absolutely, and and you know, you make a commitment to yourself, and then it's up to you, mm. you know, whether you you take it forward or not. Yeah. But um, but definitely, I think the advice that you've given is brilliant for anybody starting out because they they are accessible options. Mm. And and you're right. Start basic and and move up from there when you you know when you're ready to take the next steps. Mm. Excellent. So I think we've set the scene. The next step is actually how do you do that? So that'll be the next lesson. Mm -hmm. Actually, how do you take that and create a podcast? How do you actually record it? Which is obviously the name of the game, actually making a podcast. Now we've got the equipment. How do you actually do that? So the next lesson will look at the setup and the recording. How do you actually get started? And then what happens when you actually record it? What's the next step? Oh, that's great, Graham. Looking forward to that. Excellent. Well, Anne, thanks for being a great guest. Oh, thank you. And thank asking you. all the right questions. And yeah. yeah, no, wishing you all the best with yours. So l let's see the progress as well. Lesson yes. two. Uh, I am accountable. Are. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Great. Well, this is Graham and Anne. We are in the podcast studio, and hopefully that was a useful introduction to you to getting started and turning your idea into a podcast. Next lesson is going to be all about taking those basics and getting started and getting the first recording done. That will be our goal. I'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>